Hello bitches, welcome back to another draw with me. Today is going to be a monumentous one because for those of you who have been following me so far on this draw with me series, you know that I've been avoiding the first page because it's one of those pages that you feel like you have a lot of pressure to make look the nicest, but it doesn't always have to be that way. If you want to just draw on that first page and make it look however you want, that's completely fine but for those of you who actually want to make that first page presentable without having so much pressure added upon yourself you can always start in the middle of your sketchbook which is what I did I just started in the middle to pretty much train myself to feel comfortable enough to finally take on that first page so that is what we're going to be doing today before I move on with the rest of this video, I'm actually so excited to announce that this draw with me is actually sponsored by Skillshare! And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description below will actually get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. And for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can explore new skills through thousands of online inspiring and creative classes. When I was applying to art school, I had to make a sketchbook as a part of my application and stuff like Skillshare or affordable online classes back then were very rare to find. But now that Skillshare is here, you have tons of options to help you advance towards your career or find a new hobby, while also getting to know a community that has similar goals to you. And since I know most of you are interested in art, Skillshare is actually a hotspot for online creative classes from animation, film, fine art, illustration, and more. One that really interests me and I think will interest you all too is Sketchbook Illustration for All by Samantha Dion Baker. She talks a lot about how to compose the pages in your sketchbook while keeping the content of it personal to you, which is actually really similar to what I'm doing with these Draw With Me's as they're all collaged illustrations. So if you want to learn more about how to lay out the format of the pages in your sketchbook, this is a good one. Again, one thing I like to promote on this channel is affordable learning, especially for those who cannot afford expensive art schools. And Skillshare offers these thousands of classes for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So if you are interested, once again, the link is in the description box below. Anyway, going back to this first page of my sketchbook today, I'm going to be drawing things that I like as my first page of my sketchbook. I know that is such a difficult concept to grasp, but it's so simple yet I feel like many artists forget to just keep things as simple as that, which is to just draw something that you like as your first page if you are really finding difficulty starting. And I think the thing is we tend to overthink things. Sometimes artists think that they should always be breaking out of their comfort zone, which is something I always think about. Artists might think that they need to do something to impress someone else, like the viewer who might be looking at their sketchbook. But sometimes you gotta just say fuck it and just draw whatever it is that pleases you. What brings you joy? What sparks you joy, as Marie Kondo would say? But I think that if you can just have a little small collection of the things that bring you some level of happiness to your life and just have the ability to draw that as your first page, that will surprisingly do wonders for you for every time you open up that sketchbook and see all the things that make you happy, it will just suddenly bring you a little bit motivation to continue drawing in that sketchbook. At least that works for me. So if you're someone who wants to bring a little bit more oomph to the first page, one thing that I have really learned over the years is the way of how you format your sketchbook. So you treat a whole spread of two pages as its own little collage of drawings, and it kind of depends on how you decide to organize the individual illustrations you place. And that is something that you're definitely going to learn as you do more pages in your sketchbook and you see what are nice little pockets of places on the page to place things. And one thing I like to do is really vary up the sizes of things and the type of medium I use for it. 
So for example, many of you who are familiar with my work know that I actually love using colored pencils and ink the most. So on this first page, I'm just going to have a combination of both, but it also really depends where you place the drawings that are done in colored pencil versus ink that kind of make it more appealing. So you want to make sure that you kind of distribute it throughout the page in a way where it's not like one side is too much colored pencil and one side is too much ink. Unless if your intent is to treat them as like two completely different sides, then that's completely fine. But I'm talking about if you want to have that really integrated single collage look, that's kind of what I do is I just kind of spread out the mediums throughout different areas to kind of even out the distribution of where I do ink drawings and where I do colored pencil drawings. So for this collage, I'm just drawing things that I like, but it's not just things like, oh, I love eggs and stars, but I also love drawing characters and character moments and whatnot. But I also want to just think about the nuances of things I like, like patterns that I like, patterns that I enjoy seeing in other places or on my own personal belongings. I noticed I tend to have a really strong interest towards delicate designs that are still simultaneously bold and geometric. And in a way, it kind of reminds me of myself. I'm just this small little girl, but I'm trying to make some sort of impact if possible on this world. So now I am moving on to the pen and I'm going to be drawing things around me that I like as well. So I really like cactus succulenty plants that kind of have that rubbery vibe and I actually have some of them too in my apartment, which makes me an official Californian. So I want to have that ink drawing on the bottom to kind of balance that really strong colored pencil drawing I have on the top. So if you are also trying to make a spread in your sketchbook that is a collection of things that you like or a collection of things that define a part of you, what I like to do is to make sure I vary up the types of things I'm drawing. So not only am I just drawing this glorified image of an egg, different patterns I like or plants, but I also want to include things like food I like or something like that. I really love Asian food, so that's why I put chopsticks there. I guess I didn't really know what I wanted to make out of it yet. So I moved on to a little small vignette cafe drawing because sitting in a cafe while drinking coffee or a latte and just talking to friends or working, just that whole cozy vibe is just something that I love doing and I'm obviously very sad right now that because of COVID that is something that you can't really do but also you gotta do what you gotta do to be safe. So yeah, that's something that I'm totally looking forward to when this whole situation is over. But yeah, just sitting in a cafe while drinking caffeine and catching up with friends is definitely one of my guilty pleasures. Another one of my guilty pleasures is my boyfriend, whatever that means. Um, anyway, so my boyfriend is someone who I feel like really complements who I am. I am someone who's very structured and oriented based on planning. I'm very future oriented as well and I feel like sometimes I look so far into the future and overthink all the shit in my life that it brings a lot of anxiety sometimes. So planning does bring me a lot of peace because I can structure out how I'm going to approach my week or my year, but my boyfriend is also someone who is is just like, hey, Michelle, let's just take a step back and just take things one step at a time. Just focus on tomorrow, focus on today, just focus on the next step. And that's why I feel like whenever I spend time with him, he just brings me a lot of relaxation. So he's going to be included in my collage because whenever I draw us together, I feel like I'm reminded of just, oh, this is a person who just brings me a lot of tranquility and drawing that really helps me evoke that emotion of tranquility tranquility to my brain. And speaking of peace and being zen AF, I have a little drawing of me on the bottom right, just very cozy and I don't know, sinking into pillows or something like that. Because ever since I was little, I had this obsession of drawing characters just feeling super comfortable. I love to draw animals or people just sleeping in a bunch of pillows or blankets because I feel like whenever I draw something like that, it makes me really immerse myself into that world of being super comfortable in a bunch of pillows and blankets. So 
I like to draw people being comfortable so that I can feel comfortable. It's really weird. Maybe it's something about just empathizing with characters, which is really the point of animation and that's my job. So yeah, I'm just going to draw that on the bottom so that, I don't know, whenever I open this sketchbook, I just feel that coziness. So one thing I like to do to really balance out the mediums that I'm using on the spread is to kind of have a defined shape of where I'm choosing to place the drawings that I'm doing in pen. So for example, the drawing of me and my boyfriend, the one of me sinking in pillows and the cafe drawing, those are the ones that I'm going to have inked in. And if you were to connect them like dots, they kind of form a triangle. So it's kind of like there's a triangle right in the middle of the spread while there are colored pencil drawings surrounding it. And even though the cactus plant drawing right now is currently done in ink, I am actually going to eventually do that in colored pencils. So it's kind of like the inked drawings are kind of like some of the highlights of this spread while the things like the egg the Asian food and the cactus and the patterns in the background are kind of like either the backdrop or the backup dancers like they are the ones that help support the show and make it even stronger like I would even say the egg is kind of a statement drawing as well but that one is kind of just like if you were to go on stage and it has that main super beautiful backdrop in the background that's kind of like the egg and then everything else is like a supporting prop so also going back to what I'm saying about distributing things throughout the page to kind of even it out, that's kind of what I did with the patterns in the background where even though I had them on the very top left corner, I wanted to make sure that these types of patterns would kind of reappear in certain areas where they might fit. Usually they'll be in the pockets of areas where I couldn't have fit a drawing anyway. So why not just have that fill in the rest of the white space? So anytime I had a little pocket of white space where I felt like I couldn't really fit another drawing, I would just squeeze in those little pattern drawings to kind of have a little nice background effect. So as you can see, I finally decided what I want to draw for my Asian food in the middle and I decided to settle upon Sunubu for those of you who don't know what it is. It's a Korean spicy stew with silk tofu and I mean it's just one of those foods that really brings me a lot of joy and comfort and it's really good for things like hangovers even though I don't really drink but it's still like you know sometimes some feelings feel like hangovers okay so at this rate this whole spread is just the definition of things that bring me happiness and comfort so finally I am approaching the plant drawing on the bottom left in which I will be doing with colored pencil but even though I am doing it in colored pencil I am trying to keep in mind to not let it get lost in the madness that is going around it in all the other bold illustrations. So even though I am doing it in colored pencil I'm still going to do things like add some black shading or some slightly harsher details to it so that it doesn't get lost because even though for example the egg drawing I did on the top it is just purely colored pencil but I feel like it doesn't get lost in it because it is such a statement bold blue with just a orange yolk in the middle so I feel like that in itself is a very bold statement drawing but for the drawings on the bottom left to avoid it getting lost in all the collaginess around it I want to make sure I keep the shading semi bold especially on the cactus I want to also make sure again that I use some black shading in it to kind of give it that graphic effect because I feel like I've just come to accept that my artwork always tends to lean more on the graphic side which kind of makes sense because that's what animation is more like so yeah just keeping it graphic adding those black details kind of keep it consistent with all the other drawings going around it just like the Asian food drawing as well I also added some black ink to it so that it doesn't get lost in everything so after I'm done with the plant drawings I'm gonna go back and revisit all the ink drawings that I did and add some blush to them like it's not just blush but for some reason adding these final touches with a warm toned colored pencil always just really looks appealing with a black and white drawing for some reason I don't know maybe it kind of warms it up a bit and it just gives it some bit of dimension because I feel like it can just get a little bit boring if it's only black and white and there's kind of no other sense of depth to it 
So yeah, that's just one of the things that I also like to do as a little sketchbook tip and trick is anytime you have a black drawing that's just surrounded by a lot of other colored pencil drawings, add a little bit of that, you know, colored pencil back into the ink drawing, but not in a way where it overpowers it. Anyway, that is officially the first page of my sketchbook. I hope this video helped some of you all and inspired you to take a stab at that first page and don't let it scare you. I know it's very hard to start a sketchbook when you feel like you need to make the first page look amazing, but just remember that it's okay to just start in the middle and revisit the first page during a time where you feel comfortable and confident enough to do whatever you want with it. But thank you for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. So see you later and stay wholesome, bitches.